Hi everyone, today I want to show you one secret technique that will make your blender materials instantly better. And I know it sounds like a cheap clickbait, but this is really a one technique you can apply to most of your principled BSDF shaders and I haven't seen anyone really talking much about it, so I guess it maybe is a secret. The technique I'm talking about has many different names, but they essentially mean the same. So some people call it uh, roughness fernel, some people call it uh, angular glossiness. What this means is the sharpness of your reflection changes depending on the camera angle or the viewing angle you have on the surface. So when you look straight at the surface, the reflections are more blurry than when you're looking on almost zero angle. And for the reasons unknown, since we got the principled BSDF shader in Blender, everyone thought this effect is already recreated automatically, well, including me. However, doing some material tests I've been performing recently, it turned out this effect has to be recreated manually. So I've created a simple node setup that helps me making this effect visible and now I would like to share it with you. So without further ado, let's now jump into Blender and see how it's done. Actually, before we jump into Blender, I still wanted to share a footage of the effect I shot. So you can see now when I move my camera closer to the wall, the reflections become more mirrory, even to the point where this guy looking at me is almost mirrory reflected in the surface. Now, when I move camera back and start looking a little bit more perpendicular to the surface, all of the reflections are blurry. Here's another example, you can see there are almost no reflections at the marble surface, but when I move closer to it, the mailbox becomes almost mirrory reflected in it. And now when I move my camera back, the reflections are all gone. Let's now see this effect in Blender with the default material settings. So as you can see, I have this very simple scene setup, two lamps, some cubes. Let's disable the overlays. And in order to have it visible in EV rendering engine, since in cycles it all works by default, but let's stick to EV, we have to enable the screen space reflections. So once we do that, the roughness properties we change are visible in real time. So as you can see, we have the roughness of 0.5. And if I change my camera angle, nothing really happens. And yeah, let's now fix it. So if you follow my previous videos, you probably know already we have a special node here in Blender that allows us changing different values depending on the camera angle. And this node is called layer weight. So let's just add it to our material setup here and let's just plug it into the roughness slot just straight ahead like that and see if there are any changes. I think there are, but they are inverted to what we want to have. So the lower angle I have, the more blurry are the reflections and more perpendicular I look at the surface, the sharper it gets. In order to fix that, we can use, guess what? Color and RGB curves. So if we plug them in, by default, we have the same kind of behavior but let's try to invert it. So I'm going to move this point up and this point down. And just by this very, very simple setup, we already have the effect visible. So you can see the lower I put my camera, the more mirrory the reflections become. And if I move it upwards, they become much more blurry. So we can actually use this effect pretty precisely. Let's say if we want to have a roughness value of 0.7, we simply have to select this point here and type 0.7 into this slot here. Now, if we reconnect it with the roughness from this camera angle, we already have blurry reflections. But if I switch to the top view, you can see right now there are actually 
no changes because if we are looking at 90 degrees this x here represents 90 degree angle the middle of the curve editor represents 45 degree angle so something more or less like this and this axle represents the zero viewing angle so again if we are looking from top view we are having the exact value of 0 0.75, uh, 0 0.7 just as we have set up here so one thing I'm not the biggest fan of is using this kind of curve for the roughness because physically speaking it doesn't work like that if we look at the materials in real life the glossiness or the sharpness of the reflection changes a little bit slower than in our case as you can see if I move the camera even to those 45 or 30 degree angles we almost get the mirrory reflections here so a solution to that is simply adding one more point and my rule of thumb is keeping this extra point around this area so if this is 45 degrees and this is zero degrees this is kind of 22 and a half degree angle and right now if we look at the material you can see only around this camera perspective we are getting this mirror rear look so this is quite similar to what we have in real life and if you even compare it to this scientific uh, tests that were performed regarding the roughness of materials this looks surprisingly close to what the scientists were actually able to achieve so when I'm working with this simple material setup I'm basically using uh, three types of curves this is the curve I would use for super blurry uh, or super rough surfaces like let's say concrete or whatever something very rough so this uh, mirror reflection is only visible at those very low angles like that for something a little bit more glossy let's say plastics uh, concrete marble general surfaces you consider reflective I would use either this kind of curve or move it somewhere here but this is the lowest I would get I would probably not even cross the 0.5 range here and keep this point around this area so this is already quite reflective surface if we keep sorry if we keep this point a bit higher and move this one a bit higher we are getting a pretty decent uh, result in my opinion and if you want to do super reflective surfaces then you can actually go to 0.25 here move this point um, somewhere half the distance from this grid and boom this is the effect you're gonna get so the question you probably have at this point is lag but how can I add a texture to your amazing glossiness setup well it's actually pretty easy let me use one of the free choco concrete textures which by the way you can download from our choco store I'm just dragging and dropping it here what you need is the color mix RGB node set to multiply and what's now quite important is the way you connect the inputs so we plug in the texture here on top and we plug in our glossiness setup here then we reconnect everything and set the value here to one so right now if I change my camera let's maybe set it up to more uh, blurry reflections uh, when I move my camera up you can see we get the blurry reflections and when I move down we start getting this nice mirrory feel to it of course you can still add the color ramp node to fine-tune the texture look so let's do it right now let's change the look to be spline for a more softer effect and let's move the white handle like that the black like this and boom so uh, the note setup this very sample scene nothing fancy here but you can all download it from the link provided in the video description and yeah I really hope 
you will bring your scenes, uh, your Blender scenes this way to another level. So I know what some of you might think right now. Oh my gosh, I've been doing it all wrong the entire time. Now I need to fix all of my assets, all of my scenes, everything I already did in Blender. But do I have to set up those curves for every single material out there? And what if I told you there is a one click solution to all of that? One click and the effect is added to a selected material. One click and it's added to the entire object. One click and it's added to the entire scene. Or if you don't like it, um, one click and remove it. So together with my Choco4 team, we've been working on a simple add-on that could actually streamline the process of adding this effect to your scenes, models, materials, whatever you want actually. Um, the add-on is still in production, but it's almost there. And we thought if you'd like to get an early on access to this add-on, and by the way, it's gonna be available for free uh, to everyone. We just thought if you'd like to help us out and maybe try it out, test it out before we release it officially, you can get in touch with us at testing at choco4.com and we will simply get in touch with you once the add-on is ready to be tested. Just please, whitelist our email domain sometimes our mails land straight in spam and we are not able to communicate with our audience but apart from all of that i really hope you enjoyed this video and please remember you can donate to blender foundation to support the blender development because thanks to amazing people like you this amazing piece of software becomes better and better every day and that will be it for this video. Stay awesome and see you in the next one. Bye bye.